Hey guys, in this video I'll be going over sensor of interest or SOI and sensor point of interest or SPI in the A10. These are two terms that are used in the A10 a lot, so hopefully after watching this video it can make learning the A10 a lot easier. So before we start with learning them, we need to know what a sensor is. So whenever I think of a sensor, I think of like a temperature sensor or something like that, but in the A10 it's different. In the A10, anything that you can interact with and move around is considered a sensor. So for example, on my heads-up display, I can move around this little box, so the heads-up display is considered a sensor. I can also move around the targeting pod on the A10, so the targeting pod is considered a sensor. Okay, so now that you understand that, let's go over SOI or sensor of interest. Now sensor of interest is basically the sensor you want to interact with. Now you see on the stick and throttle there's all these buttons, but all these buttons can only control one sensor at a time. So we have to choose a sensor we want to interact with to use our buttons on our stick and throttle with. So the way that you set something as your sensor of interest is you use this switch on the throttle right here that I'm moving around, the coolie switch. So there are a couple different functions for the coolie switch. First, if you press it up, you will set your HUD as the sensor of interest. The way that you'll know the HUD is a sensor of interest is there will be an asterisk that will come up. So if I set it as soy right now, you can see that asterisk came up right here under the M, so I know that my HUD is the sensor of interest. If you press the coolie switch down, you will make your helmet mounted display the sensor of interest. Here's my helmet mounted display, and it will have an asterisk just like the HUD, so if I set it as sensor of interest, you can see this asterisk came down here, so that means that this is my sensor of interest now. If you hold the coolie switch to the left or the right, you can set your screens as your sensor of interest. So I held it to the left, and you can see I have this green box around my screen now, so this is my sensor of interest. You can see on my targeting pod page there's no green box, but if I hold my coolie switch to the right, then the green box came, so it's the sensor of interest now. Now the thing to know about the screens is that you cannot set it as sensor of interest for every page. So for example, I can set the targeting pod as soy because I can interact with something here. But if I bring up my message page, there's nothing to interact with on my stick and throttle. So if I try to set it as sensor of interest, nothing's going to happen. The other way that you can set your screens as sensor of interest is just double clicking. So for example, if I want my targeting pod to be sensor of interest, I click it once to bring it up, and then click it again, and now it's my soy. So that was sensor of interest. Um, before I move on, I just want to go over some other functions with the coolie switch since we're already talking about it. If you hold the coolie switch up, then it will bring up your message page on your left screen like this. If you hold the coolie switch down, then it will bring up your weapons pages so you can see what weapons are loaded. If you press the coolie switch to the left, then it will scroll through the pages on your left screen and the same for the right screen. So in summary for the coolie switch, pressing it up sets the HUD as soy, pressing it down sets the helmet mounted display as soy, and holding it to the left and right will set the left and right screens as soy. Okay, so now let's go over SPI or sensor point of interest. This is basically a single coordinate point in the airplane that a lot of functions in the A-10 depend on. For example, whenever you drop a GPS bomb in the A-10, the bomb falls to the coordinates of the SPI. So it's really important to know how to control the SPI because a lot of functions in the A-10 depend on it. So the first thing to know about the SPI is that you can't like create SPIs. Sometimes in YouTube tutorials for the A-10 it will be confusing because somebody will say drop a SPI right there, drop a SPI right there, but you can't really create SPIs. There's just one SPI and you always just move it around. The other thing to know about the SPI is that it's always considered to be slaved to something. Now what this means, slaved to something, is there will always be something that the SPI is connected to, that it will be following around, and most of the time it's a sensor. For example, right now my SPI is slaved to my steer point, and the way that I know that is if you look at the bottom left of your heads-up display, this area here will show you what the SPI is slaved to. It says STPT, so my, my SPI is slaved to my steer point. So you can see currently my steer point is waypoint zero here. So if I go to my map and find waypoint zero, which is right here, you can see that the SPI is slaved to the steer point, and right now waypoint zero is the steer point, so the SPI is on waypoint zero. And by the way, I know this is the SPI because it has the cake symbol. Anytime you see this white cake symbol anywhere in the A-10, that is the SPI. So let's say I change something else as my steer point. Let's say I make waypoint one the steer point. You can see on my map here, now waypoint 1 is the yellow box because it's the steer point, 
and now the speed moved over to waypoint one. So basically we need to know how to move the speed, how to slave it to different things. To move the speed, you just need to remember this. Set the sensor that you want the speed to go to as sensor of interest and then hold TMS up. And if you're wondering, TMS up, the TMS is this switch right here on your stick and you just hold it up like this. So let's say I wanted to slave the speed to the targeting pod. First, I set the targeting pod as sensor of interest, which I went over earlier. Then I hold TMS up and now you can see it says, well, you can't, it's kind of hard to see because of the HUD. You can see it says TGP at the bottom left. That means that my speed is slaved to my targeting pod. So now when I move my targeting pod around, anywhere the targeting pod goes, you can see that's where the speed is going. For example, if I put my targeting pod off to the left here, you can see that whenever I move my targeting pod around, it's also moving my speed around. Keep in mind this cake symbol for the speed it won't show up on the HUD, it only shows up on your map here and on your helmet mounted display. Now let's say I wanted to slave my speed to the HUD. I set my HUD as sensor of interest, then I put the box where I want it to go and I hold TMS up, and now whenever I move the box around, you can see that it's moving the speed on my map. One thing to note about the speed is that on the HUD there will, there will always be a line that is connecting the velocity vector to the speed. Now let me show you what I mean by that. Let's say I set my HUD as my speed. So right now our speed is where that box is, so the speed is in front of us. Since the speed is within the line of sight of my heads up display, there is a line coming out of it that points to the velocity vector. If I moved my speed outside of the HUD's field of view, the line will move to come out of the velocity vector. So even though there is no cake symbol on the HUD, you can always know where the speed is by finding this line. Another example of this, if I made my targeting pod my speed again, and I moved it off to the right, you can see that there's a line pointing to the targeting pod because the speed is there. But if I moved my targeting pod within the field of view of the HUD, you can see now the line is coming out of it and pointing to my velocity vector. However, if I were to take away my speed from the targeting pod, you can see the line is not there anymore. Now the line is pointing to the steer point because I just made the steer point the speed. So now I'll just go over the other things that you can make speed. So you can set an item on your map as the speed. I'll just turn the map off so it's easier to see. So anything on the map that you can hover over that shows information, so like this waypoint. First you press TMS up to hook it. So now I have it hooked. Then you hold TMS up and you can see it says TAD which is my map. So now I just put the wedding cake on this symbol. Now if you ever unhook something, if I press TMS down to unhook it, you can see the speed automatically went back to steer point. You can also set your Maverick Seeker head as the speed. You can set this little box on your, on your helmet mounted display as the speed. So for 99% of things, you just set it as speed by making it sensor of interest and then holding TMS up. Now, in the A10, there are three things that are exceptions that you make speed with a different procedure. First of all, if you hold TMS down, anytime you do that anywhere, it doesn't matter what you're doing, if you hold TMS down, it will always put the speed to the steer point. Then, if you hold TMS right, it will slave the speed to the last mark point that you created. Let's say I make a mark point on that mountain. Since I have the speed slaved to the mark point, you can see it put that speed right there on the last mark point I created. Now if I put another mark point down, you can see it moved the speed to this one. Now keep in mind, in the original HNC, you cannot slave the speed to the last mark point. For some reason that function is just not available. The last thing that you can make speed is the IFFCC, or Integrated Flight and Fire Control Computer. Now you're probably saying, what in the world does that mean? Well basically, if I switch to guns mode, and you can do that by clicking this button on the side. It's called the master mode button. So you can see if I click it, I switch to guns mode. So if I'm in guns mode and I have the nose pointed down like this, so the pipper shows up, what you can do is first set your heads up display as sensor of interest and then press TMS down. And you can see right now the speed is slaved to IFFCC. Now what this means by IFFCC is it's talking about the gun cross. Wherever the gun paper is looking, wherever the predicted impact point for the bullets are, that is where the speed will be slaved to. So you can see as I pull up a little bit and the impact point reaches farther out, the speed moves out until I pull up too much and the paper goes away and then the speed automatically goes back to steer point. However, if I push the nose back down, you can see it goes back to IFFCC. 
And if you want to get at this, once again, you can just hold TMS down and it puts it back to the steer point. Okay, the last function I want to talk about with the sensor point of interest is broadcasting your SPI. So the cool thing about the A10 in DCS is that it has a really good data link that all the other A10s can use. So you can actually broadcast your SPI to let other A10s see where your SPI is. So it's really simple. First, make sure your data link is on by flipping up this switch that says JTRS. Then you set your map as your sensor of interest and hold TMS to the left and you can see now it says SPI on, so that means now other A10s in multiplayer can see my SPI. Then you hold TMS left again to turn it off. You cannot turn it on and off by clicking this button, it just doesn't work, I don't know why. Now keep in mind, that is for the A10C2. If you are in the original A10C, the HOTAS control for this is a little bit different. So you can see I'm in the original A10C now. The HOTAS control to broadcast your SPI is actually DMS left. You hold it. You can see it's broadcasting, then I hold it left again, it stops broadcasting. And once again, you see that with this symbol here that says SPI on and off. There's one more thing about the SPI that I want to talk about. On the throttle, there's this red switch here called the China Hat. If you hold it forward, then every sensor in the airplane will look where your SPI is looking. So let's say, okay, so right now my, my SPI is on my steer point. So let me change my steer point to one that's in front of me. Okay, let me change it to steer point one. So steer point one's out there. My SPI, as you can see, it's slave to my steer point, so my SPI is that box right there. So if I, let me turn on my charging pod. If I hold China hat forward long like this, then every sensor in my airplane looks at my SPI. You can see my targeting pod moved to the SPI, my little cross on my map moved over to the SPI. Every sensor in the airplane is looking at the speed now. So let's say I go to a different waypoint. So now waypoint two is my steer point. So now the speed is on waypoint two. You can see now all my sensors are looking at waypoint two. Let's do another example. Let's uh, move this little box on my heads up display. Let's make this the speed. So you can see whenever, since I have, since I still have everything slaved, whenever I made this the speed, everything automatically slaved over to that. My targeting pod's looking at that now, everything. Let's say I see something interesting over off to the right. Oh, there's a guy over there. What you can do is you can put a mark point on it, and then you can do what I talked about earlier. Hold TMS right long. Now my SPI is on my last mark point, so my SPI is right there, and you can see my uh, targeting pod automatically slaved over there. So that's all I wanted to go over with soy and SPI. Thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you later.